looking forward to delving into this topic because it's complicated. And so I want to mm -hmm. start with sort of the beginner's explanation of geoengineering, which from my understanding encompasses carbon capture, taking carbon out of the environment, as well as something sort of more terrifying, managing solar radiation. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, climate geoengineering is quite complicated, but it's better to start defining it as large-scale human intervention with the Earth in order to change the climate. So the issues are large-scale, human, intentional, and the intervention in the Earth in different ways in order to change the climate. And as you said, there are two different kinds. There is one kind where you remove carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and there's already plenty. And even if we stopped all the emissions, that would still stay there, so we need to take that out at some point. And that's an important part. But the other one, and uh, I'm not sure if it's necessarily frightening, but it is definitely more complicated, is to actually change the reflectivity of the Earth to reflect more sunlight into space and thereby cooling it. Yeah, and I want to get into more of what those technologies involve um, from a technical standpoint because geoengineering encompasses such innocuous things as planting trees, which is called afforestation, but other techniques um, which we refer to in solar radiation, which are sort of mind-blowing, putting mirrors in space to somehow increasing the reflectivity of clouds. Um, and then the carbon capture and, and sequestration mm -hmm. methods of, of pumping liquid carbon out of the atmosphere and injecting it into the deep ocean floor or rocks. Um, so let's just focus on, on one of these mind-blowing techniques, which you have described um, in previous conversations we've had as sort of man-made volcanic eruptions. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit just yeah. about that, yeah. just so people understand okay. what we're talking okay. about. So uh, the solar radiation management uh, one of the techniques would like to mimic essentially a volcanic eruption and we have seen uh, large volcanoes erupting and we have measured what happens is that the volcano erupts and it uh, spits out uh, lots and lots of particles including sulfur particles that go into the atmosphere and they uh, actually change the reflectivity of the atmosphere and you uh, can measure after for example the Pinatubo volcano uh, within 6 to 12 months the global temperature went down you could measure it and then after a while when the particles disappear then the temperature comes up again to normal. So, so the idea is to for man to recreate that in the stratosphere? Uh, yeah because in the stratosphere it will be more efficient and only spray those kinds of aerosol particles that are best to, re to, to do this job and, and do it in an even way across the globe so that there is good dispersion. And uh, uh, if you do it right, that's what the models say, <laughs> uh, then you will, it will be able to bring the temperature down uh, those few degrees that it would have gone up because of climate change. The problem with solar engineering, solar radiation management, that is, while it cools the planet down, it does not take the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And therefore, uh, most experts believe that if ever one were to use uh, 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 solar radiation management, you would do it as a complement to other methods. First to reduce the emissions, then to take out the carbon, and then with the solar radiation management you get a little extra time to do all these things. But you cannot simply look at solar radiation management as the solution. <laughs>